Stampers Kim from stampingimperfection.com. Welcome to my craft room. I have a couple of things that I've been meaning to make and one of them is I saw a post on Pinterest and I've seen it many times in many different forms and it said if you're waiting for a sign this is it. So I thought um, that I would make myself a little sign that said that and so from my junk stash under my craft table I found this this is the back of a picture frame I'm going to try to give it a like a almost a wood look surface or an aged look surface and I don't have any acrylic paint instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to use three stamp pads now I have an old set of stamp pads so that's what I'm using I'm not using the ones that I stamp with all the time I'm going to use Early Espresso, Soft Suede, and I'm going to use my Craft Whisper White stamp set. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play around with it because I really like to play around with techniques and stuff. And I'm just going to like drag this across, oops, crash, to give it some color. And I was, I thought another thing I could do is that I could take the re-inkers and put a few drops on and spread that around with the um, spread that around with a sponge brush that might work too but I just kind of wanted to see what effect I would get doing this. I've seen this done with paper before. I saw a demonstration once where somebody did this with they did this exact thing with their good ink pads. This is my old old set. Like these are at least five years old and you can see actually they might be four years old because these are the um, foam this is a foam set so I keep a second set for kids to play with so I don't ruin my goods okay and I kinda like that I kinda like that effect so um, that was soft suede so I thought I would give it, it, it already has some dark Area. So I don't know. This is early espresso. Oh, that's really going to give it a dark, some darkness. Brush it across in a few spots. Maybe around the edge with the early espresso to give the edge some aged look. The, um, one, I just really love playing with techniques or taking something that I've seen on Pinterest or a demonstration that I've seen. I, I love taking craft classes, so I still take craft classes and uh, I get ideas. But sometimes I see somebody do something and then I decide, well, maybe I can try that with some different materials to see how that comes out. I know it works the way they did it. Let me see about how I want to do it. I really like this. I'm going to give this a little bit of time to dry. Maybe I'll just rub off some of the excess. Um, white pigment stamp pad. I already experimented a little. You can see the white streaks. And I did the same thing. Like, oop, that's a lot. I'll wipe some of that right off. And if I don't like it, I'll put some more of the browns back on. That actually really came out. When I first streaked across, not too much came out. Maybe I did it a little heavy. Whoops. Okay, and then I'm just going to wipe this. I'm just going to keep playing with it till I really get something that I love. I love alphabet stamps because I like different fonts on projects. So I've got a bunch of different fonts and different sizes. And I just pulled out a few from the last couple of years. And I definitely like the big letters. I have different sizes here. So, um, and I also really love. I have a bunch that are rubber alphabets, but those are not as easy to line up. I would have to get out my stamp on a jig and I don't want to do all that much work. Like I just want this to be a quick project and it can be inspirational. Um, so I just want it to be fun and quick and you know, 
sort of effortless. So um, I, I'm sticking to my photopolymer sets. Okay, so my the sentiment I want to put on here is if you're waiting for a sign, this is it. And I want the this is it to be big and at the bottom, so I might start there. I'm going to pick my largest one, and I think it's going to be this Letters For You. Now these have a bit of a whitewash look, and that's okay. And I'm looking for the T. That's why it's backwards. So I want to spell my word backwards. Because when I flip it over, it's going to be the correct way. Okay, now I'm going to take and line it up. You can be as fussy with this part as you want. I'm not that fussy, as you know, if you've been watching my videos, you know. I just am not that fussy. I don't have the energy to be that fussy. If I, I feel like if I spend a lot of time being fussy about um, something that I'm doing, I won't get it done. So I'd rather have it done than perfect. I decided that a long time ago. I'm sort of, I have this grid that I'm sort of aligning. I don't know if my T will fit here, so I might have to move everything over. All right, so let's try this. Ink this up. Go over it again. This is why I like the photopolymer because I can see where I'm stamping. There we go. And one of the things I am going to do is take a, let's see, I have the chalkboard one, I wonder if that will work. Now the white craft ink takes a little bit of time to dry. So um, I, I have a white chalk marker here. I can also, I can fill in places that I don't like the way it came out. Although I do want to leave some gaps because I do want it to look aged. So I've got to be careful. Um, I probably should have started on this side because I'm left-handed. Um, I have to be careful as I lay the other letters down that I don't smudge this. And in a little while, I'll probably take my heat gun. When I get the bottom row done, I'll take my heat gun and dry it off. So I'm going to continue with this stamp set along the bottom to do this is it. And if there's an exclamation point, which there is, I'm going to use that. So I'll be back when I get the bottom row done. So this is what I have so far, and I actually really like the way that this is turning out. And again, the font that I'm using here is from this annual catalog and it's called Letters For You. But I want to change up the font because I really like the way it looks when you mix fonts. So the next one is an older set that I have and this is Larger Than Life Alphabet and Numbers. I really like it. It's almost like uh, an old-fashioned type set and you can get um, out of this one you've got, I think you've got no, they're, but they're giant. You can see you've got numbers in here. And I do want to show you a couple things. In every single, um, or almost every single letter set has them, they have some hidden gems that I consider 
little stamps that I consider to be hidden gems. This older one has a couple of corner things that will look really cool in the corners if I decide I want to do that. Um, the new one I just used has, you can do math problems with it. How fun is that? It's got a parenthesis, it's got the ampersand, the exclamation point, which I use and I like a lot. And I have to say, I am using the chalk marker to just, like, I just did this one so it's still wet, but I am using it to fill in and smooth out um, the look a little bit. And I was thinking that if you wanted this to pop more, you could stamp it with Versamark and then use white embossing powder and heat set it and it would you would get quite a pop. But I really want mine to look aged. I don't want that shiny look. But if you wanted the ink to pop a bit more on the background, that's something that you could do. So uh, one thing I do want to remind you and that's you have to spell your word backwards. Okay, so I've started, the next word is waiting. So I started um, putting my letters down and then when I flip them over, then it'll be in the correct order. So you just wanna be careful. And a little tip when you're stamping, after you ink it up, hold it over where you're about to stamp before you stamp so you can make sure you can read the word. So one of the things I love about the photopolymer is that I can actually see what I'm stamping so when I flip it over if I've got that on there backwards then I'll I'll be able to see before I stamp so it will avert a tragedy. All right. One more tip that I have um, before I go ahead and stamp the rest of it, I decided that I would take the different fonts and I would lay out the words so that I could see the whole thing put together before I actually stamped it. This is one of the beautiful things about the photopolymer stamps. So I actually have it all laid out and then I can see exactly what I have going on and go ahead and stamp it. So I think this is a helpful tip. I you know, started with the bottom, lined it up with the bottom the way I wanted to, and then I just lay the rest of them out with the clear blocks that I have. So that's one tip to make it a little bit easier. And um, the project's taking a little bit longer than I expected, but I actually quite like how it's turning out, and I'm actually having a lot of fun doing it because while I do consider myself a paper crafter, I really like to experiment with different materials and different techniques. So I'm gonna go ahead and stamp this and then I will finally show you the final project. So here's my finished product um, with just the stamping in the background. I haven't decided whether I'm going to um, get some molding and frame it, or whether I want to add some of the interesting little scrolls. One of the things I was thinking is, with a um, a black marker, like a, the Project Life marker, you can make some lines across, and then I was kind of playing with, I don't know if you can see this, I was kind of playing, you can see that there, playing with making planks by drawing the lines and then alternating. Um, and then I was thinking that the nail heads at the ends of the board would be great if you have um, like bread heads or... So far I really like this and again you can go over it with your chalk marker if you want it to be a little bit darker but I was going for a really old effect and I think that I'm going to stop here because I like this and since it's in the back of an old picture frame that broke I have something to hang it with so um, I, I actually really like this. Now the fonts that I used, I used the layered letters alphabet for the if you are I use the larger than life alphabet numbers for waiting this is a retired set. I use the metro type which is also retired for the words 4A, and um, I use the Epic Alphabet, which I believe is also retired, I, I can't remember, for the word sign, and then I use this Letters For You, this is it. Look how big those are, and that is, that is a current stamp set, so uh, a couple of them are current, a couple are retired, but if you're like me and you love 
doing stuff like this, then you probably have a lot of alphabet sets. Now, if you are really good at hand lettering, then just take your gel pens or your chalk markers or real chalk and go for it. Use chalkboard paint and um, you could use chalkboard paint on the piece of wood and do the same kind of thing with the chalkboard effect, but play around with it. If you like to freehand your letters, that I'm envious because I'm still learning to do that, um, but I really love my alphabet sets. I use them for all kinds of projects, and this is one of them. I shared a video a while ago where I created this. I stamped on... Um, I stamped using acrylic paint onto this glass mug and it holds all my tools on my desk. So I really like that. So that's another thing that you can do. You know, you just don't limit yourself to paper. Have fun with it and you certainly can stamp on top of a painted surface. You can stamp on glass. You can do all kinds of things. And you can use your rubber stamps for, um, you know, stamping on other surfaces too. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Stop on my blog at stampingimperfection.com. And if you're interested in purchasing supplies like alphabet stamps or uh, ink pads, extra ink pads, you can shop online at mystampinstore.com. Thanks for watching.